Welcome to Biology Made Easy. In this lesson, we are discussing the importance of osmosis in plants, specifically how osmosis comes in in the opening or closing of stomata. Learning objectives, be able to identify the size of stomata in different plants, describe the structure of stomata and guard cells, state the functions of stomata and guard cells, explain how guard cells regulate the size of stomata. Well, what are the sites of stomata in the plants? Where can we find stomata in the plants? In land plants, whether dicots or monocots, the stomata in dicots is usually on the upper surface of the leaf. And then in some monocots, like in grasses, the stomata are found on the lower surface, that is the lower epidermis of the plants. So the lower surface of leaves. But in water plants, like floating hydrophytes, like this specie, the stomata are found only on the upper surface of the leaf because you look at this specie, if the stomata are found on the lower surface of the leaf, they will be flooded by water. So they are found on the upper surface of the leaf. So these are stomata. This is a section of epidermis and this is a stoma. This is another stoma. These are other epidermal cells. This is a vertical section of a leaf. This is a stoma here. It's on the lower surface of the epidermis. So this is lower epidermis. That's where the stoma is. Well, let's talk about the structure and functions of the stoma. Well, this is a stoma. It's a hole. The stomata are holes. This hole, let's look at it here too. Air will move in and out and the air we need carbon dioxide to move in to be used for photosynthesis and oxygen also to move in to be used for respiration so during the day when there's sunlight both carbon dioxide and oxygen moves in the carbon dioxide is used for photosynthesis produces oxygen which goes out during the day in the night there's no photosynthesis so any excess carbon dioxide will be removed, go out through the stomata. Beside carbon dioxide and oxygen, which are very necessary to get into the stoma, water vapor also continuously comes out of the stomata. And it's very, very important for water vapor to come out to create the transpirational force that pull water up the plant. We discussed this very briefly in our last lesson on wilting. So please check how the transpirational force is created to pull water up. So the stomata is very important to be open for these processes to go on. The structures that open the stomata are the guard cells. Well, this is the lower epidermis, as we have said, this is the stoma. These cells surrounding the stoma, two of them, they enclose the stoma called guard cells. So this is one guard cell, this is another guard cell, and in the middle here is the stoma, plenty stomata. Well, these guard cells are the ones that regulate the size of the stoma. So if the stoma becomes big and opens, it's due to the guard cells. If the stoma becomes small, reduces or closes, it's because of these two guard cells. The drawing of the guard cells in here, we have this is the lower epidermis and this is the stoma. This is one guard cell and this is one guard cell. Now we want to look at the structure of the guard cell very well because it is this guard cell that is going to regulate the size of the stoma. And it's because of its structure that enables it to do that. So this guard cell is the only epidermal cell that have chloroplasts. You see, so we have these chloroplasts in here, 
and it has very big vacuoles. So it has cytoplasm and it's surrounded by other epidermal cells. But the shape of this is bean shaped. You see how it is? It looks like a bean shape or kidney shape, sausage shaped. And then the inner walls here, the inner wall is thick and inelastic. Then the outer wall of this guard cell here is thin and very elastic. So we have it here also shown the same way. This is a guard cell with this chloroplast. The inner wall here is very thick. The outer wall here is thin and elastic. This is another guard cell, the same. The two guard cells enclose this stoma. Well, the uneven thickening of the guard cell makes the guard cell expand irregularly. So let's look at how the guard cell expands. This place is thick. This place is thin, the same cell. So if water goes into the guard cell, let's see, water is moving into the guard cell from other surrounding areas. There are cells around here. There are also other epidermal cells. And if water moves in, flows into the vacuole, and because the vacuole expands, the outer cell wall here is elastic, so it expands. The inner here is inelastic, so it can't expand. So you can imagine this one is expanding and it pulls outward like this. This guard cell is also doing the same, expanding, and this outer wall is elastic and it's expanding and pushing outward like this. So this cell is pushing outward. This cell is also pushing outward. This tumor becomes big, it opens it. Now, what happens when water is flowing out of the guard cells? So water is moving out. And as water moves out, this guard cell shrinks. It becomes smaller because the vacuoles shrink. And when the vacuoles are shrinking, these walls, outer walls here are elastic and they shrink. So it falls in like this. This guard cell to the outer wall here is elastic and it's, the cell is shrinking. So the wall falls in. And so this cell falls in this way. This also, one two also falls in this way and closes the stoma. So this is how the guard cells operate to work to close or open the stomata. The mechanism of opening and closing is based on osmotic principles. So let's look at it. You have to explain the mechanism and relate it to osmosis because that is how it is. So here you see the stoma opens. What makes this stoma open? Let's just look at this one first. Well, this is what happens. When there's light photosynthesis, the guard cells are the only epidermal cells that have chloroplast. So when there's light photosynthesis, photosynthesis will be taking place in the guard cells, this one and this one. And when photosynthesis takes place, sugar will be formed in here. And when the sugar is formed in here, it's solute, it will increase the osmotic potential in here. We use osmotic potential, water potential, these osmotic terms in our lesson on osmotic terms. Please revise that. So photosynthesis is taking place. Sugar is formed only in the guard cells, not in the other epidermal cells that do not have chloroplasts. So the sugar formed, causes the osmotic potential to increase. And when osmotic potential increases, water potential reduces. This is what we have here. Water potential reduces. And when water potential reduces in the guard cells, so the water potential in the epidermal cells will be higher than the water potential in the guard cells. So water will move into the guard cells from the other epidermal cells. So as water moves into the guard cells, the guard cells expand and the elastic outer walls of the guard cell stretches 
while the thick inner walls cannot stretch, so as the elastic outer wall of this one stretch, it pulls the guard cell outward. The elastic outer wall of this guard cell also stretch and pulls this guard cell outwards so the stoma becomes big or opens. Now, the opposite is going to happen when there's no light for photosynthesis. The sugar that is formed is converted into starch, so that reduces the osmotic potential in the guard cells. And when osmotic potential reduces, water potential increases in the guard cells more than the other epidermal cells. So the guard cells will lose water and become flaccid or plasmolized. So this guard cell is losing water. Water potential is higher here than the other epidermal cells. So the water move out, the water is moving out. And as water moves out of the guard cells, the guard cells become flaccid they are reducing in size. And so the thinner elastic walls are losing being elastic. And so they fall in. It falls in here. This inner elastic wall is being less elastic because it's not expanding. So it falls in. So as this guard cell falls in and this one falls in, it reduces the stoma or the stoma closes. The same thing happens when there's too much transpiration. The gas cells are losing so much water because of light, high light intensity, high temperatures. Wilting is taking place. Then the gas cells are losing water and the stoma closes. So this is how the gas cells regulate the size of the stomata. Well, if you like this lesson, please subscribe and also like our lesson. So we'll meet in our next lesson. Have a good day and thank you. Goodbye.